Deputy Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you very much. I tell you, Deputy Speaker, the answer, from the, question, the answer to the questions from the Minister during question time, Sir Humphrey would have been proud. There was clearly some talking points he was getting revved up for MPI and uh, stuck to them, stuck to them. But uh, I would just point out that it makes not one iota of difference if uh, these are acknowledged as challenging times and everybody else in Australia is suffering from them to the person that can't get a house and they're suffering from domestic violence. It makes not one iota of difference if the minister says housing supply is the solution, but we can't get those houses on the ground because of the supply chain issues and the, and the worker issues. It makes no difference, and it's not the solution in the very short term for the people that are struggling on the public housing list that is getting bigger and bigger under this government. And it is certainly of cold comfort to anyone uh, that is in that position that cannot afford to keep a, uh, a roof over their head when the minister says, we retain the mantle for the most affordable uh, state in the nation. Because when you're a person at the other end of the housing spectrum that can't actually keep a roof over their head, they don't care. They don't care. And so the challenge for the minister, who I acknowledge because he says it repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly in this place, that they are doing everything that they can, is that unfortunately it's not enough. And the metrics, the metrics under this government that measure how you are actually addressing these issues show that under this McGowan Labor government, Access to housing, whether it's in the community uh, community housing uh, section of the, the housing continuum, whether it's public housing, whether it's grow housing, whether it's the rental market, all of those issues have gotten worse under this government. So the number of public houses decreased under the Labor government. The number of grow houses available uh, under this government has decreased. The vacancies in the grow housing market, the member for Moore spoke to, and will, I have got no doubt. Uh, continue to talk about the, the excess that he has vacant in the Midwest when there are challenges for uh, attracting and retaining workers and accommodating uh, essential workers in the region. 182 vacant houses in the Pilbara tops the list. Grow housing, uh, followed very closely, I might add, by 118 in the wheat belt. Uh, very frustrating when these communities see these houses lying vacant. And the purchases on the spot market, as the leader of the Liberal Party pointed out, have significantly decreased under this government compared to when the Liberal National Government was in power. 97 in 2013 14, down to just 14 in 2021. Uh, there is more that this government could be doing, quite clearly. And I know this minister likes to play the blame game. He likes to hark back to when we were in government and point out some of the things he thinks are failures. But I would also point out, Minister, that in 2010 it was the Liberal National Government leading the way nationally with the release of Australia's first affordable housing strategy and introducing that housing continuum for government to start working towards investing not only in social housing but working with uh, shared equity, with key start loans, with making sure that we were providing support and rental assistance for those that required it to, pay, to keep people from having to move out of the housing that they already were in, uh, and making sure that we had a whole continuum of housing available. Very successful. And actually, uh, we set a target of 20,000 homes uh, in Western Australia when it was first released by, to reach that by 2020. And in 2015, we had to reset the target to increase it, because we'd hit it. We'd hit it. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I'm happy to acknowledge that there are some things under our government that we might not have got right. But in terms of housing, uh, there is a continuation of that strategy under your government, building on the successes that we put in place, an acknowledgement that we actually exceeded expectations when we were in government in terms of building and uh, delivering new houses. And unfortunately, all the metrics under your government have gone in the opposite direction. So uh, the challenge is, is that I am faced when I have um, when I have people coming to my office with an impossible situation, as I expect every other member of parliament is. And I've uh, got three examples from my electorate minister, um, and I have changed the names of these people for privacy because I do have very small communities in my electorate and they probably are immediately identifiable. 
but we have Violet and her four grandchildren currently living with relatives, 12 in that house. They've been on the waiting list since August 2021. Some would say that is uh, a short period of time in comparison to some of the, the wait list times, uh, up to 350 weeks, I think we've seen for some on the list. She moved out of her previous house, uh, which was a public housing property due to domestic violence issues and has been unable to be moved into a new property. I have Natalie and her three children currently living in a car at a relative's house, which has been waiting for January for, uh, for a home and is on the priority list due to the fact that she too was uh, um, subject to domestic violence at home. And Crystal and her three children have been living with relatives in two of my communities across uh, the electorate, and they've been waiting for over eight months. And the feedback from constituents who end up in my office appears to be that the houses are not available because of maintenance issues, so there clearly isn't and hasn't been attention paid to this and that there is a very good understanding in the community of which houses require maintenance and what needs to be done. So they are frustrated beyond measure that they actually can't get in and have a roof over their house. I am also aware in my electorate minister that the priority list is filled with young women with young children who are currently in a situation with domestic violence or have escaped from domestic violence. And there were 34 on the list in my electorate alone, in one part of the electorate. Um, not the entire, so I'm talking about the Avon Valley at this point, um, before COVID, and there are over 90 in that region, I am told now, uh, on the priority list. It is uh, very, very challenging when you talk about people who are at that level of desperation, when we have the minister saying it's challenging times, but it's happening everywhere, and we are the most affordable state, which is cold comfort for those people who are suffering uh, as a result of the lack of investment along the uh, supply chain under this McGowan government. Um, I would also raise, outside of my electorate, that we've uh, repeatedly raised concerns around overcrowding in terms of housing in the Kimberley and the fact that that has been raised as one of the challenges that has been exacerbating the youth crime issues in the region. And I was also drawn to the example uh, around uh, a couple of um, or two men with intellectual disabilities who were reported to be on the brink of homelessness uh, back in February, and they are from Bustleton. And Advocacy WA, an active foundation who have been advocating and looking for solutions for not only these gentlemen, but actually a whole raft of others, are saying that it is virtually impossible to find places for these vulnerable people in our community. And on a lighter side, um, you may find this as a, it might be acceptable or I'm not sure, but we've had stories of teachers living above uh, the pub in some of our regional communities because there was no housing in, their, in, their, in, in the town that they were working in, waiting for over a year to be placed. Um, and I'm also aware that it's not been uncommon, particularly in my electorate, for new graduates, in particular teachers, to sometimes find themselves sharing a house with the principal of the school because there's been no housing. I don't think that's acceptable in anyone's book. I don't think that's appropriate. And uh, what, we're, what they're then left to is to find a solution in the private sector, which is very difficult. We need uh, action from this government, not just words. Uh, we need a minister that, uh, instead of the multiple media statements and the repeated statement that we're doing everything we can, to actually get some rubber to hit the road in a circumstance where some of these, uh, acknowledging that there is investment being made down the track, there is a crisis here and now, and this government needs to use some of that surplus we know will be returned at the state budget to ensure that we are keeping those people that currently have properties in those properties with rent relief and making sure we are doing everything to identify and maintain those properties within the public service uh, at our disposal so that those that most need them can be looked after. It is simply unacceptable and uh, tinkering around the edges on some of the policy issues that I think could be making a real difference for the people that this government talks about. Uh, so often, but are being left uh, with the increasing like, uh, likelihood that they will become homeless uh, as a result of these increasing prices we see in the market across Western Australia.